day of the conference yesterday learned at least one new thing. Raise your hand high. At least one new thing. Second question. How many of you up there at the conference yesterday met at least one new person where you wanted to talk to them more? All right. To me, those are the definitions of a great conference. So congratulations to all of you. Now, I have a little something to share with folks this morning, so I hope you're getting your energy together. Our incredible conference coordinator, Phil Clissa, with the board, just happens to have a birthday today. Over there. So how about we all show our appreciation for the great conference and all Phil does with a rousing happy birthday. Are you on it? Yeah. All right. Let's go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Phil. Happy birthday to you. Woo! Woo, woo, woo! Thanks, everyone, and thank you, Phil, for being such an amazing staffer and amazing conference coordinator. Phil has lots of surprises in store for you today, so you need to stick around. There's some exciting things coming up. I just want to remind you of a couple of things. First of all, have all of you seen the little colorful sheet of paper, the little puzzle piece in your folder? That's your opportunity to do a mosaic tile and put it over on the wall before you leave so that we can put together a big mosaic of what, what the experiences with the conference were. We also want to remind you, lunch is back here, and you want to be sure and come because we're going to be doing our Die Hard Awards, and you never know, one of you might be getting an award, so don't miss it. And then finally, we do have a session after lunch, and you'll want to go to that session because we'll be giving away some prizes there. So if you stick around, you're going to be amply rewarded. And then right after that session, we're going to meet back here, and we're going to have a conference video with more prizes. You may see yourself on our video as well, and you definitely might win a prize. So please try and stick around for the full day. Finally, I just wanted to remind everyone that Andy right here, can you raise your hand, Andy? Andy has a video camera function on his camera. If any of you want to record a little mem memory of your experiences with Olivia Quigley, we would love to share that with her family. And there's a big table out in the hallway where you can write a little tribute to Olivia as well. So if you could please remember to do that, just grab Andy. He would love to record your memory. Okay, now it's my pleasure to introduce our keynoters for this morning. They are Tammy Jackson with the Board for People with Developmental Disabilities. And Lisa Pugh with Disability Rights Wisconsin. Yeah. Oh, yeah. See? And bo both of them are a team that works very, very closely with our legislator, with our governor, legislature, our governor's office, and other policymakers. They are kind of the eyes and ears for the disability community in Wisconsin around public policy. Really exciting people, very, very knowledgeable. And uh, they have decided that they are willing to team up this morning to talk to you about what is coming up as far as the results for the election. Most of you probably are aware that Tuesday was election day. And in fact, how many of you voted? Raise your hands high. All right. That's important because the disability community is a huge voting block. So it's great that all of you got out. So Tammy and Lisa are going to share with you uh, what the results of the elections were, uh, what that means for us in Wisconsin, and most importantly, what's, what's your role at, in public policy and what you can do with your elected leaders in the months ahead. So they're going to get you up and moving, they're going to get you active, and you're going to walk away with some things you definitely will need to do. Good morning. Oh, good morning. Can everybody oh, hear us? Good morning. Oh, good. Oh, yes. It's the We're Tammy on. and Lisa show. Oh, you can't hear me? All right. The hands help me. Good morning. Good morning. 
Good morning. There you go. Good morning. No? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How do we fix? Oh, well now it seems like it wants to work. Are we good? We're good? What did I do? It's green now. I think we're all good. All right. Let me get myself all situated. Back up. Situated. Yeah. All right. So Beth made it sound like Tammy and I don't like working together. We love working together. Okay. So you see the title of our presentation is Some People Talk About Change, Others Created. Some people thought, well, after I voted on Tuesday, the work was done. But actually, we're kind of like that, you know, the Scooby-Doo cartoon where they say, scooby dooby doo where are you? We got some work to do now. That's when our work starts, right? Our work is starting now. So that's what Tammy and I are going to start talking to you about today. A little bit about our election results, and we're going to go through uh, what happened in that presidential the presidential race, then what happened at the federal level, and then we'll talk about um, things at the state level as well. So, Lisa, you're not ready to present yet. Oh, I need my hat. You do need Yes, hat. we have hats. That's the most exciting part of our presentation today. Right. But this will come later, so. Right. But we get to wear hats all the time. Yes. Um, so, some of you may be aware there was a presidential election that occurred on Tuesday, as well as um, U.S. Senate races, and our state happened to be one of the states that was electing a senator. Um, the president-elect is now Donald Trump from the Republican Party ticket, and the um, U.S. Senate um, folks are the same for Wisconsin. Ron Johnson won his re-election bid over Democrat Russ Feingold. And Tammy Baldwin, this was not her year that she needed to come up for election. So we have the same two U.S. Senators that we had before. Some of you may have relationships with those offices. If you don't, now's the time to start. And we have an absolutely new president um, who will have a new administration. Um, and it's from a different party from the outgoing president. So uh, I want you guys to shout out an answer. How many people, how many of these pictures do you think represent you personally? What's, how many of the people on that page do you think represent you? Catherine, I see your hand up. How many? You think only one? Anybody else have another guess? How many, how many over here? How many people you think on this map represent you? Seven. 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 Okay. What do you think over there? Four. Four. Guess what? Four is the right answer. Everybody in this room, you are represented by one of those people uh, that are on that map of Wisconsin, depending on where you live. So if you look at the map, kind of think about where your hometown is and what's the picture closest to your town. That person represents you. And they are also represented by those two people in the corner that Tammy was talking about. Senator Tammy Johnson and Senator Ron Johnson, and then we're all represented, we're all represented by um, President-elect Trump. So those are, the, everybody ha should have four relationships and four people to communicate with in Washington. Now the important part about those people on that map of Wisconsin is those people have an office near your home. They are someone who comes home from Washington and they represent you, they meet with people back home, and that's somebody that you should get to know. So, a lot of times if you listen to the news, people are all, always talking about, well, ha who's in control in Washington? Who has more power than somebody else? And in an election, that is an opportunity for sometimes um, the power dynamic to shift. In this election, we have had a shift in who controls the presidency, what party that means, and in the U.S. Senate. The U.S. Congress, your U.S. representatives who, are, who were on that map in the slide before, remains controlled by the Republicans. They were controlled by the Republican Party prior to this election and have maintained that. And the reason why it's important, you know, what, which party controls the U.S. Congress and the U.S. Senate and the presidency is that oftentimes people from the same party have similar values and ideas 
and they think alike. And so if you have a, if you have two or three branches of government that are controlled by the same party, that party is able to elevate some of its priorities and get things passed, sometimes fairly quickly, without necessarily a lot of revision or a lot of um, you know, objection from the Democrats. Um, so you can see here that um, the U.S. Senate, those numbers in the corner, we have 100 U.S. Senators in the United States, two for each state, 51 of them are Republican, 47 of them are Democrat. There are more Republicans than Democrats, so the Republicans are in control of the U.S. Senate. Yeah, 52. It's, we, we added oh, one. They 52. just had some Sorry. Re results I'm that came I'm in. I'm reading off an older sheet. Um, and in the Congress, you can see there's quite a few more Republicans, 236, than there are Democrats, 191. So the Republicans also control that body. So I think the theme of what Tammy's talking about here is where we maybe saw things move a little bit more slowly in Washington over the last four years because there was a Democratic president and Republican-controlled Congress. Now that all three of those are of the same party, we might see um, change happen more quickly. One thing I forgot to reference on the last slide is the only face on that map that's changed is that guy who's sitting up there in the Green Bay area. So are there, who are folks here from Appleton, Green Bay, Fond du Lac, Oshkosh, Nina Menasha? Okay, he's your new guy. He hasn't been in Congress before. The other people are the same. So um, hopefully you already, if you live in those areas, you know those people, but you need to get to know Mike Gallagher. Mike Gallagher. See, I didn't even know his name. He's new. We need to educate him. That's part of the work that we have to do. Okay, so moving on, um, part, we have to kind of understand what are the priorities of all of these new people who got elected to office. And one thing that we do know is when, when people are up for election, they kind of tell us why we should vote for them, right? So um, we can look at some of the things that um, candidate Donald Trump said about disability issues or other issues and kind of get a sense for what he might do. Um, somebody asked me yesterday, they said, you know, Lisa, I'm not happy with the election's results. What can I do? And you know, when elections are over, we kind of have to figure out how we can move forward and how we can make relationships with those candidates to get things done. But what I will say is that um, another story that somebody told me is back in 1981, um, Ronald Reagan was a brand new president. And he came into office with a very, very um, agenda, an agenda that a lot of people didn't like. And one of the things he wanted to do was to, um, to really get rid of what was then called the Education for All Handicapped Children Act which is now the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, or IDEA. And he started to put forward some regulations that would really have made it harder for children with disabilities to be educated in their neighborhood schools. And uh, as you can imagine, there were a lot of parents of children with disabilities who were unhappy with that. And guess what they did? They flooded the White House with letters and calls. More than 40,000 letters went into the White House and said, here, here is what's happening for my son or daughter. Here's what's happening, and I, and I really want you to understand what this might mean. And guess what? They backed off, and they didn't change what they thought they were going to change. People's personal stories make a difference, and I think that's some of the work that if you're not happy with the election results, that we're going to try to tell you how to do that. And Lisa brought up that we have one new congressman from our area, of course, President Trump is also a new person in, in, um, in government, actually. He is coming from a background where he has a business background and has not served in public service, um, at least as an elected official. So there may be many, many programs that, at the federal level that folks like you really think are valuable or are helpful in your life that perhaps some of these new people, including the president, may not know a lot about. And sometimes what happens is they, think, they may think they want to propose a change and think, well, this, this change will do what I want it to do. And they may not be aware that it may also have unintended consequences for people like you. So it's really everybody's job to make sure that you are 
even people who are in Congress for a while, they may not have focused on the issues that are of importance to you. So, and they may have a, a, new, a new ability to make decisions on those topics. So it's really important that you make sure that you're engaged and, and kind of watching what they're doing. Because otherwise something could get passed and oops, you know, there's a consequence that you didn't anticipate that actually really does make a big difference in your life. So, um, yeah. You want me to go with Congress? Yeah. Oh, well, so I guess Tammy, want, Tammy and I thought about what are these three, what are some things that we can maybe reasonably predict might happen? And so these three, three things, changes to Medicaid, changes to SSI benefit reforms, and then potentially some changes to special education. And we'll just touch on this a little bit, because um, we don't want to go full nerd at 9 o'clock in the morning. Um, part nerd, but not full nerd. Um, we brought up Medicaid, and for, for folks in this room, Medicaid may mean a program like Family Care, or like IRIS, or some of you may be on the Medicaid Assistance Purchase Plan, or Badger Care Plus. Those are all Medicaid funded programs. And when we talk about Medicaid, we're kind of talking about all of those programs at the same time. We do know that the Republican Congress, the House of Representatives, has been fairly clear for the past few years that they'd like to really do some big changes to Medicaid. And one of the changes that they'd like to do is say, states, we're going to give you a set amount of money, just a pot of money, to fund Medicaid. That's a big change from how we currently do Medicaid. Right now, if there are more people who need to be on Medicaid, there's a formula where states get more money you know, to serve more people. A block grant, that would not happen. The state would get one allocation, and that's your pot of money to, to serve however many people there are, whatever their needs are. Um, so if you have more people who need services, or you have more people who need higher intensity services, pretty soon you get to a point where you can't do everything for everybody who needs it. And that's one of the big concerns that a lot of disability folks have. Because um, certainly with, with some of the folks that our Medicaid program serves, we serve people with physical disabilities and developmental disabilities and older adults. Um, there are some folks that need higher intensity support over a long period of time. And if you have a budget that never changes, you can only serve so many people at a higher cost without having to make decisions about the package of services that everybody may be entitled to, or you know, saying, well, we can only serve so many people, and these others, yes, you need services, but we don't have enough money to do it. Um, SSI, that's also my, many of you may receive a Social Security income check, or SSDI, too. Um, there's also been some talk over the last probably 10 years about are there people who are receiving those checks who shouldn't be maybe, or are maybe receiving them fraudulently, or, ooh, this program is costing a lot of money, how do we make sure that we're spending less on it? So the SSDI reforms that have been tossed around have really focused on how do we make sure that we're serving only the people who really need it? And of course, when you set a public policy, who are the people that really need it might change, right, from who's receiving it now. So those are two things that have been, you know, talked about over the last several years. And now that you have a Congress and a Senate and a presidency that's of the same party, some of those ideas may get elevated and talked about more and maybe prioritized. And there's an ability to move changes through in a way that we didn't see last session when we had you know, the, the Democrats controlling at least one of those branches. Uh, I would also anticipate in the next four years some changes around special education. Um, the IDEA, which is the special education law, is up to be um, updated in Congress. I think um, some of the changes that people are talking about is few, uh, fewer rights for parents within schools around advocating for their child with a disability. Also, some people are talking about fully funding special education to the states, which is a good thing. Um, and also, there is a movement toward uh, more, more money for school choice to give um, parents the opportunity to send uh, children to 
private or other charter schools other than just public schools. For advocates for children with disabilities, the concern there is a lot of times those schools don't serve children with disabilities very well because they're not required to. So that's something that we will really have to watch over the next four years. In the st moving on to the state. The state. Our, our grand Wisconsin. This is just a little slide to remind you who was actually up for election. If you were in an even-numbered Senate district, your senator was, had an election. If you, had an, uh, if you have an odd-numbered Senate district, they didn't have to run this time. And in Wisconsin, every two years, all assembly representatives are always up for election. So we have kind of three-quarters of the folks in the state legislature that were up for re-election on Tuesday. So remember how we looked at the map and we, we decided that there were four people at Washington that represent each of you? At the state level, you have three people. Everyone in this room is represented by a state assembly representative. You also have a state senator, and then you're represented by the governor. So the results here are um, Governor Walker was not up for re-election. He's a Republican. He remains in office. And really the balance of our, both our state assembly and our state senate remained approximately the same. There was some shifting of seats. Mm -hmm. We have about um, eight new Republican assembly representatives and two new Democratic representatives. So even though the numbers didn't change that much, you, we do have some new faces in the legislature. Some people decided to retire and not run again. And we have two new senators. Um, also both Republicans. One was elected in an open seat. There was nobody who was serving in that seat. And another one kind of took over from, from somebody else. And there's one seat that's left undecided. I think what Lisa said is correct. Like we, in Wisconsin, all three branches of the, gov of the state government, US, or Senate, Assembly, and Governor, were controlled by Republican, members of the Republican Party. That is still true. Um, there are just some different people who are in, engaged but th that are from the same party and a few more Republicans than we had last session. Is anybody here from like the Stevens Point area? So, that, so um, the biggest change that happened on election night is that Senator Julie Lassa um, is no longer your state senator. So you have a new senator there. I think that's what most people agree is the biggest change that happened. Mm -hmm. So that's somebody new to get to know. Um, the good thing about disability issues that Tammy and I talk about all the time is that they are nonpartisan issues. It does not matter if you are a Democrat or a Republican, disability can and does affect people across party lines. So it's an easy story to tell people about how you use programs and services because more than likely somebody in your family, regardless of what party you affiliate with, will be affected by disability. So what can we expect at the state level? The big, big, big thing we all need to be prepared for is the biennial budget, which will start heating up after the first of the year. Yes. Every two years, the state has to decide how to spend all your tax dollars that you send it. And that's the state biennial budget. Um, it's a huge bill. It covers everything. You know, everything that the state spends money on is probably in that, is in that budget. So things like long-term care, things like transportation, you know, other state services that might be important to people with disabilities, if it has an appropriation line, if there's money that goes, that is spent on that thing, it's in the budget. And there are, the governor writes his budget and then sends it to the legislature, and there's 16 members of the legislature that really scrutinize that document, they're the Joint Finance Committee, and make a lot of decisions about whether they leave what the governor has put in the same or if they change it. Some of you might remember last session, there were a couple of things in the governor's budget that caused a lot of people to, um, to contact their legislators. Potential changes to IRIS, potential changes to family care. That was part of the biennial budget. And there certainly could be other things that are of that magnitude affecting either the same or different programs again. I think Tammy and I always say budgets are about priorities. So even if somebody comes, it co comes in on election night and says, my main issue is roads, and, they, and that's why they want you to vote for them, because they're going to fix the roads, that doesn't mean that their priorities can't change. We've seen it happen all the time. When somebody meets a constituent who tells them, 
This is something, this is a program, this is a support that's really important to me. Oftentimes, legislators change their priorities, and that's a really important thing to keep in mind. So it doesn't really matter necessarily what they said on election night. I mean, of course it does to, to a certain degree, but for, for our issues, we want to make sure that disability issues, disability programs, are people's priorities when they make that vote on how they're going to spend money. And I think we just added a few um, other, other issues that might come up in the legislature in this session, which starts in January. Um, potential changes to Medicaid programs. Um, I think we've heard that some people think that long-term care programs, like Family Care and IRIS, cost too much, take too much of the Medicaid budget. And so we have to really watch and make sure that those changes aren't harmful to people. Um, we also will see some education legislation and public benefit reform mm -hmm. ideas. All right, now is the time for some fun. Does everybody, yeah, it's fun. There's enthusiasm <laughs> right there. Um, does everybody at your table have a packet that kind of looks like this? There's some papers and an orange card and a little binder clip of stuff. If you don't have you that, don't, raise your hand. If your table doesn't have that. Okay, there's one table over there. Okay, you guys have that? Okay, lot, okay. up and proud. Keep your hands up, Beth. Beth's coming, Vanna, Vanna White is coming around with your packet. Keep your hands up, okay? So these, these packets will become important. We want to just take some time to kind of model for you what it's like to elect a representative and, and how, what that representative's job is in Madison. We're mostly about, we're going to be talking about how it looks in Wisconsin. All right, so while, while Vanna's passing those items around, we want people to take that orange card that's on your table, okay? Mm -hmm. And we want people to take five minutes and talk about that question at your table. Everybody at the table should answer that question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you, for some reason, you don't have an orange card, you can answer the question that's on the, on the page. But everybody has to answer that question and we're gonna check back with you in five minutes. And it's a super serious question that's totally related to policy. No, it's not. <laughs> I think it's okay. We'll explain that away. If you want to participate in this exercise, you should join a table with more people. I'm just saying, it'll be much more fun if you're not sitting by yourself. How are you guys doing? Answer you like the best. Gotta 
you gotta make decisions when you're one person. Just tell me when on time. Hey, we have one more minute. One more minute to share your answer to the question. Okay, everybody, I hear lots of talking, lots of talking. Has everybody had an answer to the question? Because I'm going to ask you to do something else. You've answered the questions? Okay. Now, you, I'm going to give you a really short time frame, like 30 seconds. You've got to pick one person at your table that you think had the best or funniest or most greatest answer to the question. Okay? So, Go ahead, look at each other, figure out who you think had the best answer to that question. Guys, I'll grab, I'll grab that little stack of green and yellow napkins in the middle of your table, okay? And pass them out so that everybody is holding one. It doesn't matter what color it is. Pass them out. Make sure everybody at your table is holding one of the two, one of the different color napkins. It doesn't matter. Pick your favorite, okay? Now that person at your table whose question was chosen as the best. Raise your hand with your napkin in your hand. Okay, does everybody have a colored napkin? You have a colored napkin, okay. Every table should have a person's hand raised. One person's hand raised. One hand, ra one hand raised at a table. It's the person who gave the best answer to the question. All right. Okay, you ready? Guys. Oopsie. Congratulations, napkin people. You are the newly elected representative of your table. Yay. Woo! Everybody at your table decided that they liked how you answered their question the best. They thought, you, you are somebody who represents what I like, and I'm going to give you my vote. Okay, okay, so ye yellow napkin people, yellow, Hang napkin, yellow people. napkin people, the one, the ants, the representatives, we want yellow people. Can you come over? Hold Can you on. come up? What? No, no. no my, not yet. Sorry, sorry, huh? sorry. Not yet. The other thing I want you to think about, yellow, now new representatives, new yellow napkin, gold napkin people, take a look at your table and I want you to think about, okay, are most of the napkins at my table the same color as mine? or different? And do I have a lot of people that share the same color, or am I the guy that's different? Okay? You probably got some of a different color. Some of different colors. Okay, we're being flooded. We're coming to the stage. You guys are, you guys are good. You know what was, what's going to happen. Okay. So just only the people who answer the question whose question was chosen should be coming up here. Okay. And then we need green, the, gr the green question answer people. Green representatives. Greens are over, the green party's over there. Green party over there, yellow party over here. And just the people who had their question picked. Okay, green party, you guys are going over here. There are more yellows. 
We Green one. Party, over here. The Green Party. Corner. Green Party. No, you don't have to have the orange sheets. Just the green napkin. That you're an elected. Congratulations, Josh. You've been elected. Good. All of you are new electees, right? Uh huh. Uh huh. Are we getting everybody up? We have a few stragglers. Okay, lots of yellow party people. Look, it's been a wave election for yellow so, party. What do you think? Who has, who had more people elected, yellow party or green party? Yellow. yellow. Okay, but we still respect and love our green party. You yes. guys are still elected. And you're still members tables. of the state, right? Right. Just because you have fewer members doesn't mean you're not part of the state, but it looks like the yellow party is the one that's in control. Yes. So the color that has the most people, that's yellow. You're the majority party. Oh. You are the majority party. Green people, you are the minority party. Okay? Everybody right? has a job, though. Everybody has a job. Okay. So, now we're going to do, now you guys are going to talk to your fellow representatives. You're going to caucus, okay? That's what representatives do. They get together with the same members of their part, with their party, and they talk about things like what do we prioritize, what do we want to vote on, what do we think? So you guys, the Green Party are one caucus, the Yellow Party is the other caucus, and you have 30 seconds to pick one person from your party. So get to know each other really quickly. Yeah, quick. Oh get to pick know your each leader. other. You're going to be picking Figure your leader. Make your case. Be the one person. Same for the yellow party. You, you're more complicated. You've got more people to work with. So you got to select one person out of your party. Who's your person? Okay, you got the person. Jennifer, okay, you can come up here. I see four hands raised here. Hold oh, on. Oh. You gotta pick one. Are you sure? You gotta pick one. Hi. Jennifer, how do you know that you're the winner? You got one person? Are you the one person? All right. Volunteer of the willing, that's good. Okay. Well, you guys gotta go figure it out. Who's your leader? The Green Party is ahead. You have, can, you have picked one person. <laughs> one, one, one this time. But don't worry, there's more to come. Rock, paper, scissors? There'll be more picking, don't worry. Okay, Yellow Party, it looks like you have multiple volunteers, which is always a good thing, but you really do need to decide on one. All right, let's, let's, let's do it by some clapping here, okay? Yeah! Yeah, one, okay. Who else, who else wants to, Andrew? Yes. What about Andrew? Andrew clapping. Man. Dan. And the man. And Dan. Okay, a little class. less. One more. Who else? Over here. And you yes. had your hand raised yeah. too. Okay. okay. Uh, who had the most? Who else is running? Okay. What is your name? Krista. Krista? Krista, Krista, Krista. Okay. Right. Who else? What are we, what's your name? Wes. Wesley. Wes? Yep. All right. Aaliyah? Okay. All right. Okay, who do, who do we think we had the most? We thought it was Andrew? Andrew. All right. Oh. Andrew. Okay. All right, come on, Andrew. Okay. So it looks like the yellow party you got Andrew here. Okay, and are you the green party yeah. person? Okay, you guys are coming on the stage. This was really good. This was a good illustration of what actually happens. Sometimes in a big party, you have lots of people who want to be involved, but only one can take a certain role. And it's hard to and elect hard, a leader. It's hard to elect a leader. But look, but at, you, look at what you get here. You, you get your own hat. This is your yellow party leader. <laughs> and our green party leader. Party seem to have a little easier time picking somebody, right? Yeah. There are fewer people yeah. to deal with. 
So who are, okay, why are these people wearing special hats? The majority party leader, you are actually really important in terms of figuring out how to lead this whole group of folks to kind of have a cohesive plan and priority and get bills passed and get stuff done, right? So you're in charge of a lot of stuff and you have to herd these cats. That's your job, is herding these cats. Looks like a big it's problem. It's a big job. You've got a big <laughs> majority. Oh, yeah. Now, your job, you also have big, big things to do. You are responsible for herding these cats. And sometimes, you know, uh, oh. I'm going to say, is that a function of these cats? And dogs. And dogs. Cats and dogs. And dogs. Okay. Yep. Yes. She's recognizing the diversity of her party. There's enough people where there's fractions in the party, cats and dogs, and she has to work with them both and hope that they all go in the same direction. Very good. Very good. So what is the major oops, there we go. So let's talk a little bit about what these two people end up doing in our legislature. The majority party person, Mr. Andrew. You are in charge of deciding and picking who out of this group of your party members will be the committee chairs. So legislature divides its work a lot of times by topic and they form committees. And they have a person who leads the committee. And you get to pick who's leading the committee. Okay. You also get to pick other members to serve on different, your other members to serve on those committees. And you get a majority of the seats on every committee because you're the majority party. And these are committees that talk about things like family care and iris. They talk about education. They talk about transportation. transportation. And they decide what bills get passed. And they decide what bills die. They're very important people. And all of you elected officials will end up serving on at least one, but probably more than one, committee. So you guys may have been a farmer who gets assigned to the committee that deals with insurance or an attorney that gets to, to decide to, that gets assigned to do stuff like criminal justice or health care or whatever and your min minority leader is the one that gets to pick which committee she's putting you on since there are fewer of you you probably are going to serve on more committees right and more different areas okay yeah all right well Tam and I would like to make sure that everybody here re remembers the very most important committee that the legislature will appoint, that these party leaders will appoint, is called the Joint Finance Committee. Mm -hmm. That's a 16-member committee that makes all the decisions about how Wisconsin's money is spent. So, you two leaders get to decide who is going to sit on that committee. Oh, I don't have to give up my hat, Tammy? No. All I right. Hats. All right, Andrew, guess what? You're going to either make friends or enemies here. You got to hand out these hats right. to your yellow people. Go, go to, for it. Andrew has more hats to pass out than you do, but okay. these are, you are equally important on this committee. These are the people who are going to make decisions on big stuff like the budget. So, committee member or Green Party, Yellow Party people, if you want to be on that committee, you've got to advocate for yourself because there's only four yeah. hats for you and eight hats for you. And all the hat people, you can come up on the stage when you get your yeah. hats on. Mm -hmm. You have your own yellow hat. You, you picked them. You, you were going to be good whatever napkin color you had. Green and gold. Oh yeah, here. Okay. Ginger's taking charge. <laughs> Come on, hat people. Come on, hat people. Don't be shy. You now have a big position of responsibility. Your joint finance members. Okay, we've got the Green Party people coming. We've got four four Green Party folks and Ginger's coming. Make way for Ginger. All right. 
So there she goes. This, is a, this is a committee that you're all going to want to get to know, right? Because you, even if they don't represent you, even if they're not from your home, they're going to be making some really important decisions. So even if they're from the Green Party or if they're from the Yellow Party, these are people that you want to make sure understand what people with disabilities' lives look like, what issues are important to them. They are going to be making some of the biggest decisions in the state budget. Mm -hmm. And some of you might re recognize, some of you out in table land, because we haven't forgotten about you, even though you didn't have to move around or wave napkins or anything, some of you may recognize that the person who's from your table is up here. That means you have an extra opportunity, because your person is doing important work for the whole state, but they're also your representative, and you're their constituent, and you voted to put them in office so they could end up here. So take a look tables and just see if your person, green or yellow party, is up here. Did you find them? Okay. And I think the other people in the room who don't have their table person up here rely on the tables that do have someone here to have really good relationships with their legislators because you have a little bit more influence. Mm -hmm. And even if you don't have a person who ended up on joint finance, they may have ended up on a different committee that's important. No matter what, your relationship with your legislator as a constituent is always important. Not only on election day, but every day. So you should always say, even if your guy isn't on the right committees or you don't think that they're really, you know, in a position to influence, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't try and influence them because they're always your voice in the Capitol. So here's just a quick recap of all, in, of all the different people that play a role in the, legislator, in the legislature. You have your majority leaders. So we've got Andrew mm -hmm. and Catherine, Catherine, okay? Then you have your joint finance committee members, all the cowboy hats, your green and yellow cowboy hats. There should be 16 of those. That's just like there is in the Wisconsin legislature. And then the people that might be on those committees that Tammy was talking and about, all of these who are folks. all these other legislators who are serving on committees that could be on a different variety of topics. And all legislators represent constituents in their districts. So again, everybody in the room has both somebody who represents them in the state assembly and somebody who represents them in the state senate. Mm -hmm. And everybody in table land you can influence those people. So once you voted, you didn't get disappear, you didn't go away, you're still at your table, and you have to remind them that you didn't disappear, you know, and that you're, you're still there at your table, right? So the last thing, Tammy, and I want to make sure that you leave here today knowing is kind of what your job description is. So at every table, there are these white pieces of paper that talk about a job description for Wisconsin's best disability advocate. Who in this room wants to be Wisconsin's best disability advocate? How about everybody? Good. Right? Everybody. Everybody, okay? And you know what that means is really getting to know who your legislator is. So let's talk about what this job description is. Your required skills. You have to be able to talk about disability issues. You want to talk about things that are important to you, things that impact you. You want to know what life is like for other people with disabilities in your community. You have to be willing to get to know your legislator, get to know that person who was elected from your table. You have to be able to put politics aside. Even if it's somebody you don't agree with, it's somebody who's not from the party that you identify with, it's somebody who you don't agree with their, the, the platform of their party. Disability issues are not partisan issues. You have to figure out how to move beyond that and educate that legislator about um, issues that are important. So what can you do? All the people at the tables, and I'm not leaving people who are Yellow Party and Green Party members out of this. What can you do now that it's past the election? You've, there's been a decision made. We know who's up here. Your job is to introduce yourself to your two state legislators, your state, US, your state senator and your state assembly representative. And you can figure out who won the elections at the web address. 
And your job is to, to say, hey, I'm your constituent, and I would love to be, you know, meet you for coffee in district and talk about things that are important to me um, you know, with, with my disability. You can also reach out to other people who have disabilities in your district and say, hey, maybe we'd all like to go out for coffee or pie. I like pie better. <laughs> Um, and, and invite your legislator to, into your lives because it helps them be a better elected official when they know who they're representing. Every legislator has a favorite spot in the district that they like to go to to meet. That can even be your first question. You could say, I'd like to get to know you better. Where do you like to meet in the district? They'll probably name a coffee shop or maybe it's Culver's. Could be some, you know, could be some local um, breakfast place. Every legislator has a place like that that they meet with constituents. You might be surprised. I once talked to somebody who did this for the first time. They thought it was going to be kind of scary. Their legislator talked to them for an hour and a half at a coffee shop to where the constituent was looking at his watch like, I got to go, you know. <laughs> so you will be surprised at that. Um, you, there's plenty of resources that you can educate yourself about what's in the state budget. Those are things you're going to want to know about what's in the budget and what are priorities um, that you want to help your legislator learn more about. Um, so again, if you look at this job description, think about how you can get to know your legislator. And if you're in this minority party, if you're in the Green Party, sometimes you might find that your legislator feels like they don't have as much power, that they um, aren't able to pass things that they would like to pass. And you have to convince them that it's really important to work across the aisle with the members of the Yellow Party to continue to get things done for people with disabilities. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Okay. You done? I think so. All right. Okay, so that was our little mock election. Lisa, I have a question. What, what's the most important day after Election Day? Today. No. <laughs> Try again. You're wrong. Most important day after Election Day? Yeah. Why not? Joint finance member, yellow party, every day, every day. is important after yeah. election That's day. That's right. Every day. That was a trick question, It was. Tammy. Gotcha. <laughs> Start today. Okay. Thank you for listening to us. We, um, I don't know if we have time for questions, but Lisa and I will be around the um, for the rest of the day, so you can you can catch us if if uh, we aren't able to get to your question now. And you guys can keep your hats, and we keep think there are some extras that might be raffled off later if you right. really want a yellow or green cowboy hat. That's right. I'm excited. I like mine. Good job, guys. Good job, guys. <laughs>